Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan and I hope you enjoy my sub vlog. So I just walked in my classroom. It is Monday morning and I just put my stuff down and remembered that because of the carnival, I have a lot of fixing to do in my classroom. Because Let me show we you. had one of the carnival activities here in this classroom. Um, this is my stuff right here, but we had to move all the desks and chairs and a bunch of desks over there and stack all the chairs. So I have to move all of that back. Happy Monday morning to me. <laughs> You can see there's a beautiful rainbow, so that's really nice. Happy Monday. So even though I'm pooped and all I want to do is sit down right now and start planning, I'm going to go ahead and write the morning message just to kind of get that over with and then I can spend the rest of the time kind of relaxing and working on the computer. So I'm going to take some of my prep time today because there is a first grade job opening at the other school that I did the long term sub at. So I'm going through and just updating this um, cover letter to send straight to the principal because when you apply online, um, you send out like a general cover letter and a general resume. So I'm going to send out a specific cover letter to the principal um, so that she can get it early this morning, look at it and do all that kind of stuff and yeah. I highly recommend if you're hoping to get a job in a school district this is a really helpful way to do it is sending out a specific cover letter to that school and even just going to that school and talking to people or bringing in your resume and cover letter can make a big difference so I highly suggest that especially if when you apply online it's a general cover letter See if I can match uh, here. Yeah. Okay. no no you just do it with those uh, four cards Wait, what, where's your crib? You don't use these. You just had to find a batch right here. You guys, how do you put? Did you? There's a right here. Two. On your lyrics. I love it. Can I do a run? Bam. Why shouldn't she be proud of it? She was no token. Her record was faultless. Watch it, Josie Jo. Westing's getting to you already, and the game has barely begun. Pair number five. Grace Windsor Wexler, heiress. James Shin Hu, restaurateur. Grace Windsor Wexler ignored the Snickers. Hi guys. Yes, <laughs> it's already Friday. And the reason I didn't really get to film that much this week was because it was just kind of a crazy week. I've been really nervous because today I'm getting observed by the principal um, so she can write me a letter of recommendation. That's something that I just asked her if she would be willing to write me one. And I suggested that she could come in and observe me to kind of see what my teaching looks like. Because even though you work in a school, oftentimes other people don't really get to see your teaching or see what you're actually doing as your job. And that um, will allow her to be able to see me and um, write a really good recommendation, hopefully, <laughs> um, based off of that. I chose a time that I feel like I've set up really, really well. And it's during Reader's Workshop. So here in the school, I don't know if I've already explained this, but basically they have Reader's Workshop, Writer's Workshop, and, and each of the workshops have a mini lesson, a managed independent learning time, and a share time. So what we've been doing for Reader's Workshop is I showed you that body packet, and they are doing that the body. And so first, I'm just gonna go backstory just in case this is like your first time here. But basically they, I got big sheets of paper, they laid down on them, traced their bodies, cut them out, hung them up in the hallway on the walls. And then we've been going through different parts of the body. So brain, heart, lungs, pancreas, stomach, 
and today we're doing muscles and they're going through all those different ones. They're reading important facts about them, they write about them, and then they color and cut out a body part and stick it onto their body. So that's what we're doing. And then it starts out with me showing how to read a nonfiction text and just explaining like I, I will look at the table of contents, I'll look in the index, and I'll just kind of learn different things. Today I talked about background knowledge and we're going to make a KWL chart. So the mini lesson is going to be a mix of the KWL chart to kind of guide our research and then going into the nonfiction text and kind of looking for the things that we are questioning or trying to learn more and asking questions about those. So that's what we're doing. I feel like I've set it up really well. <clears throat> So the mini lesson I explained to you, we basically just read about the body part and I kind of show how to do that in the nonfiction text with, again, looking at the table of contents, the index, talking about what the heading shows and what the image or picture shows, what the subtitles or captions show, what does a bolded, letter, or bolded word mean, and different things like that, um, along with the important information about that body part. And then they go back and I've set up small groups so that I can meet with um, like four to five people in the small group. We'll actually read the from the packet, we'll read that together and we'll kind of go over the information. We talk about what we learn from that, both from that packet of information and the information that we learned from the nonfiction text. And then um, they write it down, I check it off and then they can go back and do their body parts. And then during that time, I'm also going to make sure to check in with the kids and kind of see how things are going. And then the share time, the kids just read what they wrote. And so sometimes I'll ask kids like, hey, can you read that in front of the class? Otherwise, if they didn't get it checked off during work time, they can bring it to me to get it checked off at that point in the share time. So yeah, I think I've set it up really good. I'm very very hopeful that she kind of sees that I'm a good teacher I'm excited about this and yeah um, on another note yesterday I started teaching the kids about cribbage and it's a really good game for learning number sense and just like quick um, addition and things like that so if you don't know this is a cribbage board and this is what I showed the kids and um, we just kind of went over the, I got at this advice from another teacher, but I really love this idea of real world application of math and just showing the kids that, you know, gosh, I have a hair on my face. <laughs> um, showing the kids that, you know, math is all around us and here's a really good application of where you can find math. So yesterday I just um, started by talking about how to make 15s so we just brainstormed different ways that you can make the number 15 and I lost some cards here and then I pulled I put out I told them that um, in the game you deal six cards but I just dealt four and so I have two fours a ten and an eight and then we just talked about like could we make any 15s um, and then we talked about okay what what are pairs and what is a run and going over different things like that I showed them one um, one hand of a cribbage game with another student helping me out and then um, that was kind of the it of our that was kind of it that was the end of our math time but I just want to go over it more because I really really like this idea of playing cribbage in the classroom I've asked students if they would like to bring in their cribbage boards they can and I think again it's just a really great application of real-world math and I just love when you have things like that um, the other thing that we did during math hold on a second please are these trip planning sheets and it looks like it, these are from love teaching kids i think this was about 
like $10 on TPT. But it's really cool. It comes with um, five, or sorry, seven different um, places you can visit. They're all in the US. And it has different things. I'm just gonna show you this sheet, um, just cause you do have to pay for this. But, so basically they choose their city and then I had them do it in pairs, do this project in pairs, and because you're doing it for two people, so they would make sure that the two of them are, or it would be like the two of them planning the trip. So they have to choose their flight, rental car, hotel, activities, and food. And then, you know, for they're going for three days, so they have to do it three times, and they have three meals a day, and then three activities, one for each of the days. And then the hotel, they have to do it for three nights. And again, kind of a real world application of kind of math, <laughs> not, sorry, a real world application of math. And how do you plan a trip? How do you make sure that you start with a certain amount of money? How do you make sure that you don't run out of money by the end of your trip? And if you have excess money, what would you change in your trip? This is for the students who finish early, but um, I asked them, if you have extra money left over, what would you do with it? Like, would you buy souvenirs or would you do something different on your trip? And if you don't, you know, why didn't you have enough money? But for students, uh, this is kind of simple, simple multiplication or simple addition, but it requires some thinking and sometimes you have to go back and say, you know what, I can't stay in that hotel or I can't have that expensive rental car because I won't have enough money to do activities or even eat. So that was something else that we did that was really fun and um, the kids really liked it. Some of them, you know, like any project, um, you have some that finish in 10 minutes and you have some that can't even get through one problem. So I, I have kids that are kind of all over the board right now and I'm trying to find time, but yesterday there was a small group that went to accelerated math. Today there's a small group going to um, gifted and talented. So it's kind of like, it's been really hard to try to finish this. So I'm hopeful that um, the cribbage will kind of take up that time. And then if we do have time for the trip planning, then we can do the trip planning. But anywho, <laughs> I think that is going to be it for right now. I will try to talk to you guys at the end of the day and talk about how the, wow, it's been nine minutes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> how the um, observation went. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Yay, I'm nervous. Hey there, so yes, it is a different day. <laughs> um, and the reason I didn't talk on Friday after the observation is because um, the principal actually came in to talk to me at the end of the day because we've been having an issue with, um, I don't know if it's necessarily bullying, I don't know, anyways, we've been having an issue so she had to come in and talk to me and I asked her a little bit about how she thought my observation went and she seemed very happy about it she said my academic language was great especially if i had el students in here that they would have benefited a lot from kind of what i was doing and how i was speaking and things like that um so she seemed very pleased she missed i'd say half of my lesson um so the lesson started at 10 30 and I know she had to talk to one of my students after after specialist because they weren't being very respectful um so i was kind of thinking like okay maybe she'll come in later and honestly she didn't really end up <laughs> showing up so then we just ended up um like continuing on and um i sent out a quick email and i was like by the way like you're supposed to be here at 10 30 and it's like 10 50 um we can either reschedule or you i mean my lesson goes in for another half an hour so you can come see that she ended up coming for the end of it 
I had small groups and she came to watch my small group as well as um sorry um as well as watching my share time so i did end up going a little bit over but because she missed the first part i wanted to make the second part um just as good so i worked with my small group it was fun and um yeah i think it worked out great uh, let me show you quick what the sheet looked so like. So to get things started, I began with talking about um, a little bit about muscles. I asked the kids about this word background knowledge. And then I said, what background knowledge do you have on muscles? Now the principal didn't get to see this, but this is part of what I did for the morning message. And then I... Now, she missed a lot of this, but I got to use a little bit of this in my small group as well as in my share time. So I just made a KWL chart, what we think we know, questions or wonderings, and new learning. So as we were reading, or well, before we started, we just talked about what do we think we know. And then we, I asked uh, what are questions or wonderings because they can help guide our research. And then as we were reading we went through and checked off things to confirm our knowledge just gave them a little check there based on what we read and then any of our new learnings <clears throat> or things that answered our questions we wrote down in our new learning categories so one of the big things that kids wrote down was that if i can get it here tendons join your muscles to your bones and a couple kids wrote that down and maybe they wrote it wrong or whatever. And I said, why don't you go check our new learning and see what it says. And so then we talked a lot again about tendons, join your muscles to your bones. So that was kind of part of the academic language of um, like understanding kind of what these big vocabulary words mean and kind of um, how we can explain them a little bit better to students who might have troubles understanding. So the principal did say that she's excited and happy to write a letter of recommend re <laughs> recommendation. Um, she even mentioned being a little bit sad that they don't have any job openings and that I should continue looking for jobs in this district. So I'm kind of hopeful that if I have two letters of recommendation from principals, that I'll be doing pretty good. Um, I'm even working summer school this summer. I reached out to one of the ladies at this school to work at summer school. So I'm hopeful that something will come of this and I'll get kind of lucky. A little update, I, I think I told you guys that I applied for a first grade position in the district I did my student teaching and a long-term sub in and just subbed a bunch of times, have really good connections there. And unfortunately, I mean, it's Monday now and I still haven't heard anything back. So it can be, I think it could be a mix of different things. But, you know, it does make you worry that if you don't hear anything back, that, um, you know, probably isn't very promising. Which makes me a little bit sad because I have some good connections there and it would be nice. But, you know, um, everything happens for a reason. So, yeah. Um... I think I'm going to end there, guys. I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you're having a great week. And I will talk to you next week. I'll look exactly like this because it's Monday. Um, so I'll talk to you guys next week. And I hope you have a fabulous week. And enjoy your teaching um, as we get closer to the summer. So I'll catch you next time, guys. Bye. <laughs>